Mm, yeah. I love my HBCU. Uh. And bar? bar? I love it, love it. Yeah. I love it, love it. Yeah. I love my HBCU. Yeah. And man. Yeah. I hope my team they won one. Yeah. I hope my team they won one. Yeah. Man. I hope my team they won one. Yeah. I hope my team they won one. Yeah. I tune into the HCCU Sports Lab to see if my team won a loss. If they lost, I'm quiet as a mouth. But if they won, keep tab. Uh, I'ma do the dab, yeah. Dr. Cavill, yeah. he know what he be talking about. Talkin Mike about. and Charles, Talk. they know what they be talking about. Talkin they about. compress the analytic data with the hip hop. If you know them like I know them, they gon' tell you if your team, if they wanna lose, yeah. and who the ball, who the ball. So listen to Professor, uh, yes sir, yes, and pay attention, boy. cause he gon' teach a lesson. And yes. hey, welcome in episode 501 here on Dr. Cavill's Inside the HBCU Sports Lab. I am uh, your Don Strock, if you will, your number two moving into the number one chair, uh, Charles Bishop, along with my co-host, Mike Washington. And of course, you've seen this young man on with us before, uh, tremendous journalist. Whenever uh, I'm in the press box or on the press row, he's right over there beside me, Wilter Jackson, man. Welcome back in to the show. Glad to be here. Man, I tell you what, uh, a lot of stuff to get to uh, in terms of sports within HBCU news uh, as, as, and just sports in general. Uh, but, I mean, uh, man, I, I tell my students all the time, Will and Mike, you know, we, we are living in some in unprecedented days in terms of when you're talking about uh, sports. A uh, huge night in, in, in the sports world, even last night when you talk about uh, the WNBA draft. Uh, the talk of the sports world in terms of what everything is going on in that regards. Of course, we got HBCU news tied into that. Uh, as Angel Jackson uh, was drafted by the Las Vegas Aces uh, last night. But I mean, so many different directions to go in, and we're going to get into all of that. Of course, uh, we got baseball to talk about. We're going to talk a little bit about some of the spring practices, and uh, we'll talk a little bit about the NBA playoffs. But uh, Mike, man, how was your weekend? If I can get Mike up, Wilson, how about yourself, man? How was your weekend, bro? Oh, uh, my, my weekend listen. was, it was, it was pretty yeah, good. Sorry, sorry about that. Hold on. We'll, 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 yeah, we'll sorry about that. I'm getting the spinning, the spinning thing of death. So. Oh, so, my goodness. Uh, my, weekend, my weekend was great. Had a chance, had a chance to catch out some spring football, PVAMU. I know TSU had some spring events going on, but who cares about that other school? Uh, they they doing their thing. So uh, I was at there. We're able to see some of the talent at uh, P that PVU has to offer. Catch the draft. Had a, a restful weekend, as short as it was, but ready to get back to it. So I appreciate it, CB. Oh no, Don Wilson. How about yourself, bro? As uh, you can see, I'm a little in a little bit of violation here. <laughs> you know, but I understand. You know, Charles, I don't think it, I don't think nobody gonna say nothing to you. I mean, you you Jackson State through and through, so I, I don't think. I, I don't know. Sometimes a little be I love purity can be tested. So you know, I yeah, you know, you know I'm gonna say something. Oh, I do, I do. I know how I, I know how it goes, but I think for me, I'll man, say, I'll week, say something. This 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 weekend for me was pretty kind of relaxed. Just you know, got a chance to you know catch some sports, uh, watched a little bit of the Masters. Um, Mm. Like Mike said, some of the spring games, you know, kind of following, seeing what I was hearing from that. And then just really preparing for the, the WNBA draft. I was in New York last night, got a chance to see it front and center. Uh, a lot of things happened with that. So uh, that's that was pretty much my weekend. No doubt about it. I mean, we're going to get into a little bit of that because uh, you have watched Amy Jackson up close and personal. I have as well uh, in terms of uh, the type of caliber player uh, that the Las Vegas Aces are going to begin. But we'll start off with a little bit of uh, news and notes. And unfortunately. Uh, we have to start off today on a, a bit of a somber note. Uh, as uh, this past Sunday morning, a uh, tragedy at Tennessee State, uh, Shazan Page was hit and killed by a vehicle while crossing the street in Nashville. Uh, local police indicated that the vehicle involved was described as either a red sedan or a small uh, SUV. Uh, a red vehicle with extensive damage to its front was seen leaving the area of the incident at a high rate of speed. Uh, Shazan Page was uh, only 20 years old, so... Uh, Tennessee State Director of Athletics, Dr. Mickey Allen, he acknowledged uh, Paige's death. And uh, this is a quote from, uh, of course, Dr. Allen, Shazan will be deeply missed by our big blue family. 
as he was a phenomenal young man and leader who made everyone around him better. So our thoughts and prayers, uh, we start off today uh, with thoughts and prayers to the Tennessee State Big Blue family. Uh, unspeakable tragedy. Anytime a young man, a uh, young black man loses his life uh, at this stage in life, uh, it really hits you uh, differently. And I just wanted to just extend those thoughts and prayers to Tennessee State. Yeah, if I if I may add, I'm I happen to be traveling here in well, I was here in Nashville last night, and I'm here in Kentucky, and it was a big deal story. And here's the kicker: uh, he leaned over to protect his girlfriend mm. that he was walking with uh, from the vehicle, who she said was speeding astronomically. She she said 100 miles an hour, but whatever the case, the beating was. He leaned over to protect her and push her out the way. That's that. If I know nothing else about this young man, I know something about his character. So no, just tremendous loss. No doubt about it. I mean, uh, and unfortunately, just hours earlier, uh, he had played in Tennessee State's uh, spring game. Uh, and then for this unspeakable tragedy to happen, I tell you what, Wilton, it's always uh, it, it hits different uh, when young men lose their life uh, at this stage of uh, uh, of their life. I mean, we've all been in the classroom. And uh, these young people are so full of energy and vigor. Uh, unspeakable tragedy, Will. Absolutely. And, you know, Charles, in, you, you talk about being in the classroom and talking to young students. I have that experience as well. And it's just like it, it reminds you of when your parents told you when you were kids, like when you thought you were grown at mm. 18, 19, 20, 21. They always say and they, they always remind you to to be careful and watch your surroundings. Be careful who you hang out with. Uh, different things like that, because you just never know what type of issues you might find yourself in. And even if it's maybe if it's not your fault or, or, or what have you, uh, you just always want to be able to watch your surroundings. And so I, I think about a young man like him, you know, just like you said, just got through playing in the spring game, uh, a bright future, obviously. Uh, you just hate to lose people in general, but more so for, for sure, another young black man that had a promising future. Uh, that was going to be under Co Coach George this year. So, uh, you know, prayers out to him, his family, and the entire Tennessee State community. Absolutely, man. Uh, that is a tough to, tough way to start episode 501, but we had to acknowledge uh, his presence and his death. And, and like I said, Dr. Mickey Allen, I'm sure uh, they'll get more information out in regards to uh, his funeral arrangements. Uh, we're going to shift gears slightly here. Uh, WNBA draft last night. Of course, we talked about it initially. Angel Jackson drafted by number 36 uh, by Las Vegas Aces. Uh, huge night for Tamika Reed again. She has another one of her players drafted. Second one in three years, of course, Amisha Williams Holiday uh, back in 2022. Uh, but Angel Jackson, uh, and we all watched her this past uh, the past uh, two, three seasons, I believe, at Jackson State. Uh, you talk about a rim protector, a force down low, uh, definitely worthy of getting uh, professional consideration, Will. Absolutely, Charles. Like I, when I watched her that first year at Jackson State, and I can remember Coach Reed talking to her or talking to me about her, how she had to kind of find her way when Amisha, uh, kind of like finding her way within the program, obviously coming from a, a Pac 12 program like Cal. And, you know, a lot of people may forget this is a former McDonald's All American. Um, stellar athlete. And I think this year we saw what we what we really wanted to see in the previous year. We saw all complete forms of her game this year. You're talking about somebody, like you said, that can protect the rim. But more so than anything, we saw her take advantage of the scoring opportunities this year, too, mm. especially in that SWAC tournament game when they needed her to step up to score. And believe it or not, and though in, you saw glimpses of it against UConn as well. And even Coach uh, Gino Ariema, he mentioned her in, in the uh, – in the post game press conference when I was there for that particular game, he said that he, you know, obviously that he he credited her game and you know for Jackson State, although Jackson State lost the game, he credited her credited her performance. Um, and so it's no surprise that she gets an opportunity to compete for a roster spot uh, in the WNBA. And it, it, like I said, it shows that you know what uh, Tamika Reed is building at Jackson State, second player to get uh, drafted into the WNBA. But it's going to be a tough time. I mean, right now you're talking about a, a stacked Aces team, back to back yeah, WNBA yeah, yeah. champions. You know, yeah. they have 18 players on their rosters right now. If you know anything about the WNBA, 12, yeah. it's only 12, 12 players to a roster. So it's not going to be to where everybody can fit, which is sad because it's just it's just so much talent in the WNBA. And those 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 players, those uh, ladies deserve roster spots. Mike, go for mm -hmm. it, man. You were talking about uh, Angel Jackson. Yeah. She had a stellar career at Jackson State. Angel was a beast. There, there's no better word. I wish there was a more descriptive term, but she was a beast. The question on the table is, 
I think, uh, Will, you had it. She's on a stacked roster. Mm -hmm. Can she ball with the ballers? I think she can personally, but can she ball with the ballers? They're only going to accept 12, 13 if you consider reserve roster, actual roster. I think she can. I think you have. I think what Tamika Reed has built is phenomenal. But there have been some questions that come up. If you watch ESPN, you know, say, you know, can she ball with this group? Absolutely she can. But I'd like to get y'all's thoughts because y'all followed her closer than probably did than I did. Oh, you know, we, we, we absolutely follow it. And we'll, we're going to get into even more of that time. We're going to bring uh, Chris Gardner to Houston Round Ball Review. Uh, he's going to come in and talk to us a little bit more about that WNBA draft as well as give us uh, a little bit of uh, some prognostication, if you will, for the NBA playoffs as things jump off tonight with regards to the uh, NBA play-in. Switch gears a little bit here. Uh, a little baseball over the weekend. Uh, we had some great games around the diamond, especially looking at the SWAC. Uh, FAMU, they went into Mississippi Valley, took three from the Valley Delta Devils, uh, all football scores, double-digit scores there. Uh, we also uh, had uh, Jackson State took two or three from Alabama A&M, uh, but that game in the middle, 22-17, to 17, I think T.C. Taylor and Coach Maynard were coaching those games, uh, but <laughs> that was uh, <laughs> a game two of Jackson State and Alabama A&M. Southern, they go up to Grambling, they take three from a hard-hitting gremlin uh, a baseball team. And then you also had, very interesting, Alabama State. They took two or three from Bethune-Cookman. Talked about Bethune-Cookman being a hot team oh, going into that game. Alabama don't forget State. about the Texas team. Don't forget they about that Texas team. Definitely can't forget about the Texas team as uh, Texas Southern. Uh, they swept UAPB. And what else happened this weekend, Mike? Oh, <laughs> I'm sorry. Did some, I'm sorry. Did something happen? I missed it. This, this, I'm sorry. This, this, did something happen? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Man, did someone check the press? Oh, what? Man. <laughs> oh, is, is, man. Is, is PB not on a three game winning streak? They what? Are on a three game winning streak. Uh, <laughs> shout out to the Prairie View getting it done against All Court this past weekend. Uh, so, a lot of great action in and around the swag. Uh, we switch gears as Kyle T. Mosley. Kyle T. Himself. What's going on, guys? What's going on with you, brother? What's happening? I see you got Wilt. Mr. What's going on, Kyle? On hey, you know, what's I call going on, Wilt? Wilt? What's I call happening, Wilt? Mike? I, I hey, Wilt what's James. going on, Kyle? I call Wilt and James Brown, man. He's one of the hardest working <laughs> men. Hey, hey. Wilt. 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 Wilt got me feeling self-conscious about how I look on this. He got the hanger chip. He got the hanger chip. Hey, I just want to be I just want to be like Charles when I grow up. All he's missing all he's missing is the ascot, man. I'm like, man, Will. <laughs> no, no, Mike, he, he brought, he, he, he he brought that out a couple ascot. of times on my program. Yeah, so Will, <laughs> and he had that little flower on the side. Of the yeah. <laughs> I think I missed it in some kind of way here. I'm like, <laughs> oh, boy. Those damn capitals. Oh, I tell you. Oh. <laughs> I'm like, man. Oh, Will got Will got me feeling all up in my my emotions up in there. Nah, <laughs> no, man, welcome here, Kyle, man. You had How you doing? Doing well. You had an opportunity to watch Texas Southern up close and personal this weekend. Chris Dishman brings out the maroon and gray tigers uh for a look see this past spring. What did you see out there this past weekend, brother? <laughs> Saw basic football, and uh, that's what they were trying to run. Just basic football, enough to kind of thrill the fans, get people motivated for the upcoming season. Uh, you did see Chris Dishman take control of his team, but that's a good thing, right? Uh, he came in with an opportunity to kind of usher in the Chris Dishman era at Texas Southern. Uh, he told those young men there's a lot to be played, there's still, still a lot of roster spots. As he told the media, it's still 11 roster spots on offense and 11 on defense that mm -hmm. needs to be filled. So this Texas uh, Southern team is still evolving. And uh, right now, Chris Dishman, he's the man. No doubt. And, and, and I'm going to throw this question out for, for the panel uh, as a whole because uh, I remember a time when we kind of look forward to the spring game because uh, the graduating seniors, they were gone and the twos became the ones and the threes became the twos. And you didn't have, as Dr. Cavill 
uh, affectionately calls it the roster churning that we mm -hmm. see now, especially with guys uh, entering the transfer portal and things of the nature. But has the spring game kind of fundamentally changed? Because I think you got a lot of fans, they will kind of do a twofer. It's like, coach, you look good. Uh, is that all? Is is there anything else coming? Right. So, you know, that, that, that sort of happens. But uh, the question, uh, I guess, for the group, and Mike, we can start off with you, has, has, spring, has the spring game, has it fundamentally changed? Uh, absolutely. You know, I go, I was there at the uh, Prairie View game and you would, the overwhelming majority of comment and sentiment was, well, they look great, but you still got this person coming. You still got this person. You got this recruiting class coming. Mm -hmm. And, and, and so they're going to still have to battle. This looks good, but what have you done for me lately? They knew, you know, most of the folks that are there, they knew that this was going to be there. You got a few transfers at least in Prairie View spot, I was looking at the TSUs. Mm -hmm. uh, a few things changed, but it wasn't good. And But it's changed the lens by which we look at spring practice. It used to be, is it a good game? Now it's it's good, but what are they going to do to get ready for the fall? I think the narrative has changed. You know, yeah. Wilson, we were both at the Jackson State mm -hmm. spring game. Uh, sort of what were your impressions? Because I know for me now, I kind of get to the spring game and I'm kind of looking around for the food trucks, you know, to see what else is going on and, you know, to see if they're doing any branding or marketing or anything of that nature. But, and the game is there. But, you know, you give me your thoughts in regards to what you see now for the spring game. I mean, you talked about the food truck. I mean, I was just enjoying the boom and all the other high school students they had going playing along with them. So that was that was a thrill for me. But no, more more so than anything, I think that you talk about the change of, in the look of a spring game. You, you're no longer getting, you know, what you're going to see in the fall. And that's what Mike alluded to. You you we've been accustomed to seeing like, okay, well, you had a quarterback that sat on the bench that was waiting his or her, we were waiting his opportunity for for two years. It's like, okay, by the by his junior year, it's time to start. Well. You know, like you said, Charles, we, we were sitting in that press conference, you know, listening to TC talk. And how many players did he say that the team was missing on both sure. sides of the ball? Even yeah. on, even as, cause as a matter of fact, you talk about players that he wants to steal. Add, how many players did he mention um, from the special teams aspect? Because he didn't want to go through what Jackson State went through last year in terms of missing out on a kicker or a punter. So you really don't know what full players that you're going to have on your roster yet until – Essentially, when you get back, during, well, for summer training, once you kind of figure out what that's going to look like and really just getting into the fall. And it's just like you're getting a, a literally a shell of like, here's the talent that we have, but we have other players coming. And a lot of that, which is which is, which is what you allude to, just, you know, players jumping in and out of the portal. And like that's not going anywhere. It's still going on now. You know, right. so it's going to continue to to be that way. And I think you're going to see the luster that we want to say that we want to maybe saw from a spring game, say, maybe seven, eight years ago, uh, going forward, you're never going to truly know what it's going to look like. Well, like you know, I, I have to jump in here. Well, and I, I agree with you. I think spring games are more promotional games, right? And it's to really get the fans riled up again, kind of re-energized and re-interested in football. It, it's not about the, the players that are going to be there because, quite frankly, some of those young men who were out on the field – like you say, either enter the transfer portal or they come, go to other squads somewhere or may not be back at that institution. So, uh, Bob, not Bob, but uh, Chris Dishman did talk about the fact that he's got several highly thought of recruits that will be coming to Texas Southern. So he's not ready, ready to say, Jace Wilson, who was the newcomer of the year last season, mm. is my starting quarterback. Mm. He said everyone has to renew their job. Yeah. And if they're able to do so, then they're, they're going to be able to start. But he said, like week one, week two, we may have certain new starters then. Week yeah. three, we may have new starters then. So it's going to be always evolving there at Texas Southern. Speaking of evolving, and I was really curious about this uh, in terms of you guys' thoughts in, in terms of how the spring game, we, we know the gameplay is going to be milk toast at best, but what are some innovative ideas in, in terms of how schools can go about promotional activities to get their fan base fired up for the upcoming season? Yeah, I, I think there's a joke, but I mean, where have you tried something? And I think the first step was, was plausible. And they tried, you know, they had food trucks. They had a DJ there. They made it a game day family experience. Um, so if it didn't do anything else, 
it kind of jarred the interest level. And I think it's going to take a couple of iterations. But, you know, last year, for instance, you went to Prairie View spring game. It was just a spring game, and that was it. You had left with that same sentiment. Well, they got a quarterback, but we know they're going to bring two in from the uh, from recruiting. So you don't know. This year, it was that sentiment. Plus, you had the band there. Plus, mm-hmm. you had food trucks. Plus, you had kind of squared off area tailgating areas. There were actually tailgating stands. So they created, dare I say, a fall pseudo homecoming without to the to a smaller degree environment. To me, that's a nominal change, but I think that's something that schools should build off of. No doubt. Wilson, go for it. I think Charles, like looking at Jackson, well, I'll say this, and you I think we we talked about this as well. Like the previous year, Jackson State spring game, it was pretty, pretty desolate, but this year it was a pretty decent crowd from sure, you know, from that from that previous year. But like I said, and I talked about this, the band, like they had high school students there. I actually like that, you know, in terms of combining those students with uh the moment playing. But like I'm I'm like Mike, like being able to maybe like tailgate. Uh, Because I actually thought that that would have been part of the experience. But I felt like this year, too, specifically looking at Jackson State, um, there were some opportunities where I just kind of felt like it wasn't promoted as much as usual. And so maybe that's that's, that's not that's an option to where, like, you know, if you want people to come to the spring game, knowing that, you know, obviously the, the, the key players or all the players may not be on that team specifically right then. Like, you know, you got to promote it more and give them something else to keep the keep the fans engaged. No doubt. Now, one I, more I thing. Know. One thing, Charles, I'm sorry, was it? Just to build on that point, let me get that in real quick. Promote it. It was really great, but there was sentiment about if you want to promote a – let's get some younger 20-year-olds to promote this environment to a 30-year-old's environment. I'm sorry, Cal, I had to do it, but there was a lot of talk about that. The person that promoted this was kind of someone in the older generation. I think if you had somebody younger, from a marketing standpoint, you would have generated more interest. It was good, but – Next step, let's get some younger folks into it. Hey, be careful. Well, uh, again, <laughs> let's Go let's uh, it, Mike's uh, concerns about ADA. We're gonna have to go ahead and shelve that a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> but seriously, what I think one thing also, you look at the NFL. They have to do something about that Pro Bowl game, right? Mm. Uh, they had to be able to reengage the the fan interest, and really at that. Spring game, I've been to many. How interested are you after probably a couple plays here or there, right? Why don't they have some of these uh, events like like one-on-ones, uh, show, showcasing the, the quarterback's arm and if they can get it to the, the receiver down the field and stuff like that that's going to have people go, ooh, ah, instead mm. of just sitting there and wondering, What's the next step? What are they doing now? And why is that happening? Or why are they just on the goal line? That those are the things that I was hearing from the side. You know, uh, we had a young man who drove. He and his family drove in from Louisiana just to see this. We had a guy who flew in from Virginia uh, because he's a Texas Southern alum to come down to see it. Give them something exciting to be able to see. Also, where was the ticket sale? Mm. Where was the season ticket packages? Mm. There was that lack of promotion there. I think they missed an opportunity, a golden opportunity to put some seats, uh, some people in the seats and be able to secure some season tickets. So those are some of the things that need to be a part of the whole marketing scheme. See, be careful. Y'all going to get way too innovative. The next thing y'all going to start talking about is alternative uniforms. And we know how that goes. <laughs> you know, yeah. So, Retro uniforms. <laughs> yeah, we don't want to do that. We don't want to get too innovative. <laughs> Think outside the box there. Red, uh, red, red. <laughs> <laughs> Charles out of protocol. Yeah, I'm out of protocol. I'm out of protocol. Man, Man you man. started the show out of protocol. When you going to finish that one? <laughs> You're running them up. I'm going to have to tell uh, that. Uh, yeah, I know, right? <laughs> you got that wayward student out there. Man, yeah. God, man, it's always a pleasure for you to come in, man, and share your insights uh, uh, for the spring game. We're going to bring you back in for uh, not just uh, HBC News. We'll probably get into some some other stuff in terms of to looking at the pro game as well. So, man, uh, always pick up the phone when you see Charles call, bro. All right. Thank you, Charles. Thank you, <laughs> no Thank you, Mike. Take care, guys. Well, I appreciate you, it, Kyle. Uh, 
We'll take a quick break here on this side of HBC Sports Lab, and we'll come back. Let's talk a little basketball, a little more basketball with Chris Gardner, the Houston Round Ball Review. We'll be right back. We're back. It's time for the 2024 Urban Nerd Con. Join us in Atlanta, Georgia, April 26th through the 28th at the Cortland Grand Hotel. Special guests include Underworld creator Kevin Grievous, Gary Gray from Fairly Odd Parents, from Nickelodeon, Giovanni Samuels, the Science Machine, Michael Green, the Sci Fi Sisters, and from Spaceballs and Star Trek Voyager, Tim Russ. Hi, I'm Tim Russ. Join me April 26th through the 28th at the Cortland Grand Hotel in Atlanta, Georgia, for the Urban Nerd Con. Our heroes, our villains, our stories, everyone con. I'll see you there. Live long and prosper. Visit TheUrbanNerdCon.net to get your buy one, get one free badges before the price increases. Remember, our heroes, our villains, our stories, everyone's con. See you there. If you think all pads are exactly the same, think again. This is Always Ultra Thin's reinvented with the Always Triple Protection System. This pad wicks gushes 90% faster, absorbs even more so you can feel dry, and locks odors in. Rethink your pad for up to 100% leak-free and odor-free comfort with the totally reinvented Always Ultra Thins. This is always like never before. The Cuvée Group is a Florida-based marketing and training consulting firm. We help businesses communicate to their target audience and engage them in conversation. We also help to expand their audiences, which will ultimately result in growth for those organizations. In addition to being a certified constant contact specialist, my colleagues and I are also certified in John Maxwell Leadership Principles. We use these proven principles to conduct workshops, training, and private coaching sessions for individuals and companies looking to take things to the next level. Contact us to schedule a free consultation. Issues today, don't delay. Call Cuvay. Compress the analytic data with your hip hop. If you know them like I know them, they're going to tell you if your team, if they want to love you, and who the ball, who the ball. So listen to Professor yes, sir. Yes, sir. and pay attention because he's going to teach a lesson. Yes. And welcome back here to the Sports Lab. Charles Bishop and Wilton Jackson, of course, Big Mikey in with us as well. And I tell you what, if the ball is bouncing, uh, basketball is bouncing here in Houston, uh, you got to bring this guy in. We'll talk a little WNBA, a little NBA, Chris Gardner from the Houston Round Ball Review. Chris, welcome back in to the Sports Lab. Good brother. Brothers, 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 how y'all doing, man? Wilton Jackson, your new name. Welcome to the family, brother. <laughs> I appreciate it. How you doing, Chris? I'm doing great, man. I'm, I'm honored to be on the show, CB. No doubt, man. I had to bring you in. Of course, we have the HBC tie-in with Andrew Jackson uh, being drafted by the, the Las Vegas Aces. But I, I tell my students all the time that we live in literally unprecedented uh, sports times. Uh, WNBA draft last night, uh, tremendous interest, uh, tremendous interest in this draft class coming in uh and i guess to throw the question out there does it has the wnba uh do they have their sort of i don't know magic bird moment that has uh come upon them i hope so mm. I, I i do hope so and you know caitlin clark that that well who was it sports media watch whatever announced the uh, numbers ratings for last night a couple hours ago 2.45 million view viewers wow tuned in wow. to the WNBA draft. So the Caitlin Clark effect continues. <laughs> Her impact is just college had a massive impact and now she's taking it to the WNBA and, and hopefully Angel Reese in Chicago will, will get, make a role. She's not the greatest offensive player in terms of skill set and low post scoring, but she still gets things done with rebounds and hustle heart and all those good things that coaches love and, Teresa Weatherspoon is going to love her. I really believe that's a great matchup right there. Great pairing. Yeah. When you take a look at this draft class, uh, is there anyone who sticks out beyond Caitlin that you think can make an immediate impact in this league? Wow, that's, that's tough because, I mean, the WNBA draft is well, – w, w, the WNBA is hard for rookies to make squads. You mm. know, only got 12 spots. And, and finances, not every team carries 12 players. 
Mm. So that's going to be an issue. I think Cameron Brink with the Sparks in L.A., she's going to have a great fit there. And she's got the, the blonde hair and all that kind of stuff, too, to fit in with L.A. And that marketing part will be great also. But in terms of her skill set, I think she'll do great with the Sparks also. No doubt. Guys, go for it. I think for me, outside of Kaylin, you look at Camila Cardoso, obviously going to be a teammate with Angel Reese. I was, like I said, at the draft last night, and uh, she got asked the question, you know, being a, a teammate with Angel Reese now, and she said, you know, nobody's going to get rebounds on us, and that's that's so true. I yep. mean, because you're talking about – just think about the battles that they had this year uh, between South Carolina and, and LSU, but more than anything, they, they're going to make each other great uh within their own right but you know talk about getting coached by a legend of the WNBA space and Teresa Weatherspoon and you know and a Sky franchise is kind of rebuilding and, and retooling what that franchise is going to look like moving forward um and then also uh you mentioned Cameron Brink Cameron Brink is another another player that's gonna that's gonna have a good uh good good start to, uh, that I believe is gonna have a good start to her rookie career also Rakia Jackson don't 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 oh, yeah. don't about her yeah. started her career um, you know, made one of her stops in her career at Mississippi State, so she has those Mississippi ties. But like Rakia is going to be a problem. Mm -hmm. uh, she was a bucket. She didn't always necessarily have all the help that she needed um, throughout the season um, at Tennessee. But I think you know now stepping into this new phase of you know playing you know with more space and in, 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 in the WME, I think she's going to have a good career as well. And Mike? I think Rakia, excuse me, CB, real quick, Mike. Go for it. Mm -hmm. I think Rakia, she could be a problem at the two guard mm -hmm. because six feet. She played some at the three at Tennessee, but matching her up at the two guard with her skill set and overall game, yeah, that's a good call, Wilson. Mm -hmm. So, so I I hear this talk, and you know, you listen to all the the shows, folks, and who's going to be a two guard, and who's backcourt, and who's going to have rebounds. But the other on the other side of the coin, this talk about the disparity in pay. Um, you look at you look at the NCAA game. There's 18.7 million people that tuned in to watch that championship game. That's way more than watch the men's game. You have bona fide stars now that are traversing the WNBA. The question on the table to me is: Is this the curve for building that involvement, which in turn reflects itself in equity or more equitable pay for women's athletes because they're truly garnering more reputation, more viewership. So where does that, I mean, do, you, do is this the crop that does it? Think about the NBA of the early 80s. Is this the crop that does it? Chris, when is the next collective bargaining agreement for the WNBA? <laughs> next year. Okay. <laughs> that's, where, that's where it's going to start. And if I'm the commissioner, the WNBA commissioner, Kathy Engelbert, I'm going to just ride the wave of momentum and say to Adam Silver, the NBA commissioner, we're going to try, we're going to go our separate ways. We're going to try, see, we can get in terms of media, ESPN, Prime, all the other TV networks. We're hot. We got Kayla Clark. We got all these young, talented players. We're going to see what we can get with market bears in terms of money and overall TV revenue. Are we at that inflection point with regards to women's basketball to where they can I hope make so. that move? We're hmm. going to find yeah. out. I hope so. I think we're on the cutting edge of it, Charles. I, I don't know if it's exactly there right this second, as in like coming into the 2024 20, season, but I'm willing to bet I would I would probably take some money out of my account and, and going into the 2025 season to, to for sure say having having seen players like Kaylin Clark go through her rookie season, Camilla Cardoso, Angel Reese, you know, even yeah. players like the Asian Fair, the, the third, you know, leading scorer in women's college basketball history that went in the second round. Let me let you let me repeat that in the second round from 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 uh, from Syracuse. So uh, you're talking about a, a, a very stellar group of players, um, you know, within this draft. I think that by looking at them after their rookie season and what impact they're going to bring to their respective franchises in the league, I think you're going to see more and more growth. Uh, and more viewership, and it's going to put some pressure on um, Kathy Engelbert to to really, you know, go off what she said that she was going to do. Because she mentioned yesterday in the uh, opening press conference before the draft started that, you know, she has a certain amount of teams she wants to be uh, added. I think it's like three or four teams that she wants to be added uh, within the next couple of years. Well, to be honest, I think that it was a missed opportunity because some of those teams I feel like could have been added maybe going, coming into this year as opposed to starting next year. Uh, so I, I'm just really interested to see if she, if, if, you know, if the WNBA holds to that because it, this year, by far, the level of talent in this draft, it, to see to to see and know that like the quality of players that got drafted 
may not be on roster spots yep. when the season starts. Not training yep. camp, yep. when the yep. season starts. Let me let me throw something out there at you all because uh, I think you've seen some comments. Uh, Diana Taurasi uh, was up front. Uh, is there a little bit of professional jealousy? You know, we talk about the talent within this draft class, but, you know, you got, got players already like, yeah, they're in for a whole rude awakening once they get here. I, I, I don't call it – I won't call it jealousy. I think – the veterans are happy. The young ladies are, are now getting paid because it's going to be a rising tide floats all boats. Mm. But I think the vets are going to show these rookies. I'm still a grown up, an adult in the game. I'm a pro. You're a rookie. I'm going to show you what being a pro in the W is all about. I think that competition, competitiveness, yes. But money wise, jealousy, no. Yeah, I, I, I don't think it's jealousy either. And, and I just kind of want to reference something on Twitter. I can't remember the, the young lady who uh, started these series, this a series of tweets or whatever, but they were talking about uh, what was their, I guess, coming of age moment or, or their entrance to the WNBA moment. And believe it or not, a lot of players uh, talked about, you know, having some type of interaction with Diana Taurasi or what have yeah. you. So it's just, you know, one of those things where it's like, I don't think that it's a, a, a space of, of jealousy. I think it's just more so the fact that like you had really great college careers, much, much like her and Sue Bird and Lauren Jackson and Candace Parker, the list goes on and on and on. But when you step into this new level of the WNBA, it's it's the the, the ladies are, are, are stronger, faster, like defense is much harder. Like it's, you know, not just the first layer of defense, the second layer of defense, like, you know, and, and people thinking like, was well, Kaylin Clark's game going to translate to the WNBA? I absolutely think that it is. But at the same time, she's not going to be required to do all of the same things at the same magnitude that she sure. had to do it at Iowa. She's going to have an Aaliyah Boston there that, you know, she's going to be setting picks and, like, pick and roll basketball in Indiana under, Lynn Dunn, uh, under you know, with general manager Lynn Dunn. I mean, that's fun. That's back to Indiana Fever basketball being very fun. That's just one example. But uh, I just think it's more so the fact of making sure that they know that, like, it's a different level between college and the professional ranks. Sure. And, and let, let me say this. I think yeah. the different players, okay, Kaylin Clark and Sabrina Unescu, but both were highly touted at college. It took Sabrina a while to get it going in the pros. It takes all rookies. Mo- Kelsey all, Plum, too. Most Kelsey rookies. Plum, yeah. Male or female. It's going to take you a while to get used to the pro game, the physicality, right. the travel, all that as well. Right. I'm just waiting at some point. Kaylin Clark might go through a slump. I told you she wasn't ready for the WNBA. <laughs> yeah, I told you she wasn't good enough. Yeah, that's yeah. the point. That's you know. the point I'm getting yeah. at. There have been some Twitter, a lot of social media, and, and – Perceived digs at Caitlin Clark. Uh, she's making what three hundred forty thousand, give or take. She's got a couple of uh, of other deals, but there've been some perceived digs. That point right there, Chris, is the point I'm waiting on when it goes off the cliff. Where I told you she wasn't quality. I told you she wasn't ready. I think that I think the same could be said about Angel Reese. Do you have some folks saying, you know, does Angel Reese deserve all of this notoriety, all of this? To me, that's what you see. I don't think it's hate, but I think it's kind of a wait and see. And I told you so. We've been we've been at this for a while. We're old school. We're OGs. So uh, yeah. respect the league, respect the process, and know that this league is different than the league you came from. Yeah. So I think Edwin just said it. Loving basketball, they said it best. Never let a rookie yeah. take your spot. That's it. Exactly. <laughs> but no doubt. Guys, let me toss this out to you. Because I think this is an example of the growth of the WNBA. Years ago, when I was at Casey with, with Ralph Cooper, who we all know he's helped raise all of us, basically, in A-Town Media, had high school, college players, women's players on the show as guests. Mm-hmm. Ralph asked them, and sometimes I would you know, co-host, would ask them who their favorite player was, Hooper. Almost all of them said, a fella mm. and named the dude. But now, if you ask these young ladies who your favorite player is, Asia Wilson. That's seismic. Yeah. 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 You know, pick a player, Sue Bird, Dana yeah. Tarasi. They'll name women as opposed to years ago, it was men. Mm-hmm. That's huge. That's a great point that you brought yeah, that's, that's that's up. That is a tremendous point. That's a shift in, yeah. in, in, in culture. Yeah, yep. no doubt about it. Well, Chris, let's let's transition. Uh, we got the NBA play in uh, kicking off tonight, uh, and man, let me. I know a lot of fans have done this. Like, okay, uh, demystify who's playing who uh, in terms of, of what happens uh, if 
whoever wins the playing game tonight, what, what happens after the end? Because you got a lot of people like, okay, I'm, I'm excited about it, but I don't know what's about to happen. Yeah, the NBA has, has not done a great job of explaining how this works, even though this is not the first year of it. You know, but <laughs> right. tonight is the Western Conference teams, seven through 10 seeds, seven seed Pelicans, New Orleans, New Orleans Pelicans hosting the AC Lakers. The winner of that game will be the seventh seed. The loser of that game still gets to play. Mm. The next matchup tonight is the Warriors and the Kings, nine and 10 seed. The winner of that game would play the, the loser of the seven, eight game. The loser of that game is done. So the loser of the 9-10 seed tonight and tomorrow, West and East, is done. Loser the loser of the 7-8 seed still has one more chance to get to the playoffs. And they play the, the winner of the 9-10 on Friday. And then that winner would be the 8th seed. So the winner of the 7 seed matchups will be the 7th seed. And this, so they'll be in. Whoever wins the Lakers-Pelicans tonight, mm -hmm. The what is it? They're gonna play the next tomorrow. They'll be the seventh seed in the playoffs. The yes. loser of the eighth seed is not done. They still got one more shot to get into the playoffs. So they have two games to play. Yeah, to in some ways, one win. In some ways, algebra is a little easier than figuring that one out. But thank you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. When did algebra come become advanced tree? I'm just curious. <laughs> But, I mean, great matchup tonight. I mean, we got the Golden State Warriors, Sacramento Kings. Uh, Chris, look at your crystal ball, man. How, how does that thing play out? I, I just – the Warriors are playing better now. I think the Kings are – the injuries are starting to pile up on them. Mm -hmm. And they're not playing good ball right now, whereas mm -hmm. the Warriors are. The Warriors, in their mind, they still have one more run to compete for a championship. I think that window is closed. But I think they'll beat the, the Kings. How about that? I take a look at the Lakers Pelicans game. And as a Laker fan, if you're not a little bit scared of this Pelicans team, you're a little delusional because they can shoot the ball. God, they can shoot the ball. Uh, Wilton, I, I'm curious, man. The, the, uh, doomsday scenario no Golden State, no Los Angeles. Is it still interesting to you? Oh, absolutely. There's a lot of talent in, in the NBA um, on, on both sides, especially in the Western Conference. Like you're not going to be short of of, 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 uh, of of excitement. Of course, you still got Phoenix uh, as a six seed. You still have Minnesota, a team that if you asked me two months ago, I still didn't put my trust in. But, you know, and, and, and looking at, you know, Ant-Man and what he's done to transform that team and Rudy Gobert, like, I mean, obviously they made it to this point as a third seed. Uh, we'll see what they can do in the playoffs. Of course, you have the Mavericks. We know what Luka can do. The team that I really want to see if they're going to really step out of this 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 space of like with and you talk about injuries is the Clippers. Like yeah. they've they've had you know so many opportunities. Of course, injuries have played a, a a big factor in like what that team could do. But I really want to see if this is the year that they can kind of break out of that. And then of course you have OKC, and there's just a lot of excitement. If you don't like Shea Gilligas Alexander, you don't like basketball. I mean, mm. for a guy to be able to score you know, distribute, do the things he does, not take very many three-point shots and, and score at the, the clip that he does. I mean, I just love the way he he, he plays the game. Uh, he does it the right way. Uh, so if there is a scenario where the Lakers or the Warriors are not there, I think you still, you're going to be in for some exciting basketball for sure. Mike, let me let me follow that up and ask this question. Uh, uh, Adam Silver, he's wanted parity for a long time. Uh, is it good overall for the NBA if we don't have a, a dynastic type team sitting out there? Uh, me personally, no. I, I think you have parity, but you have to have that dog somewhere in the league. Mm -hmm. um, you got to have one or two teams that really drive the league. And you say, I really want to see, I, this is my team, but I want to see that thing. Think about, remember, you know, you know, competition drives success in business and in any industry. Mm. And when you have a team that stand out like that, when you have all parity, which to be honest, which is what you have now, the the Thunder, you know, Oklahoma City, they they are balling. Nobody knows, you know, unless you are really enthralled in basketball or a basketball fan, nobody knows how good this team is. You need that team that everybody knows, and I think you just don't have that. And I don't know how good that is for basketball long term. Mm. I'll, I'll, I, I agree with Mike in the sense that 
people like when the Warriors were rolling, winning championships, they got ratings because folks either loved them or hated them. Right. They wanted to see them play or they want to see them win or they want to see them lose. That's what this the league is missing right now. OKC is up and coming. They're a one seed, a lot of young talent. Will they? Typically, the NBA championships champions take go through steps, go through levels. You got to yeah. lose in the playoffs. You're going to go through the grind, take that pain from the previous year and, and go through it. OKC has done that. They have not been through all this kind of stuff. Mm. But fellas, doom day scenario. Clippers, Mavs. Whoever loses that series will be out in the first round. Yeah. What happens? <laughs> That's a great point. That's a great yeah. point. And, and you know, while, while we're spending all this time over in the Western Conference, what's happening over there with the Eastern Conference? Is it, is, it, is it pretty much the Bucks and Celtics, or is there a chance that New York basketball can make mm-hmm. hay in this playoff? There's a chance. But if, <laughs> well, if Well Embiid is healthy enough as a seventh seed, they're beating the Knicks in the first round. Mm, mm, yeah. I'm sorry, yeah. Stephen A. No, I'm not. That's going to happen. Yeah, yeah. That's very interesting. I mean, I mean, there's a chance. There's a chance that I might grow to be 6'5", but, you know, that just can't <laughs> yeah, happen. Good right. <laughs> Lord may be 5'6", and that's it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but, 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 <laughs> Boston – Won the East by 14 games. Yeah. Giannis is hurt. Yep. As good as Jalen Brunson is, he doesn't have Julius Randle. Almost mm-hmm. everybody else in the East has something wrong with them. It's injuries, pieces missing. If Boston doesn't come through the way it's yep. set up for them in the East. What, what, what about the Miami Heat? What about playoff Jimmy? Jimmy Buckets, what's up? Well, the thing is, we hadn't seen that same Miami tenacity. Yeah, that we're, we saw we're the same year. Miami team man. <laughs> no, it's where not. Is that team man, and and that team is playing the Sixers in the in the, in the play in. Like I said, <laughs> they don't have an answer. Bam Adebayo is good, but if Joel Embiid, the big fella is healthy enough, nope, it's not happening. It's man. just not happening. This has been fascinating discussion, guys. We're going to have to do it again. We'll come right back here on Inside the HBCU Sports Lab with some final thoughts from our panelists. If you think all pads are exactly the same, think again. This is always Ultra Thins reinvented with the always triple protection system. This pad wicks gushes 90% faster, absorbs even more so you can feel dry, and locks odors in. Rethink your pad for up to 100% leak-free and odor-free comfort with the totally reinvented Always Ultra Thins. This is always like never before. The Cuvée Group is a Florida-based marketing and training consulting firm. We help businesses communicate to their target audience and engage them in conversation. We also help to expand their audiences, which will ultimately result in growth for those organizations. In addition to being a certified constant contact specialist, my colleagues and I are also certified in John Maxwell Leadership Principles. We use these proven principles to conduct workshops, training, and private coaching sessions for individuals and companies looking to take things to the next level. Contact us to schedule a free consultation. Issues today, don't delay, call Cuvay. As technology continues to bring changes to the world of education, it's time we also reimagine teacher professional development. Gone are the days of one-size-fits-all learning that can only be accessed at a specific time and place. The Stride PD Center is an on-demand library of mobile-friendly courses that allow educators to learn anytime and anywhere. Our dynamic courses provide bite-sized learning and help educators advance their knowledge while also gaining professional development hours. The best professional development plans are those that include a level of flexibility and choice for educators. Whether you're a teacher, school, or district, visit us today to take charge of your learning. Compress the analytic data with your hip hop. If you know them like I know them, they're going to tell you if your team, if they want a lot, yeah, and who the ball, who the ball. So listen to Professor Yesa yes, and pay attention because he's going to teach a lesson. Yes. And we'll get ready to wrap up episode 501, but we wanted to go around the room and get some final thoughts 
uh, from you guys in terms of put your sports thinking caps on. What are you looking forward to uh, for this upcoming week with regards to sports? Who first? Go for yeah, it. Who's... You started talking. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, all right. Well, let me see what I'm looking forward to. Well, okay. Rockets had, well, Rockets coach and GM. Emi Udoka and Rafael Stone had their end-of-season availability today, this afternoon. Rafael Stone was of the mindset that the Rockets are good enough right now that he does not see a need to make a major change. So mm -hmm. I wonder what Rocket fans think about that. Because the Rockets, they improved a lot by 19 wins. They finished 41-41, to 41, did not make the play-in, did not make the playoffs. Look at the teams in their division. Who are they going to be better than next year without a major move? Interesting. Interesting. That's right there. Yeah, rock a scary team. I like what they look like. Wilson, go for it, bro. I think for me, I'm looking for the Pelicans to bounce back. I know that game is already underway. I was uh, watching it when we were in the break. But uh, I, I want the Pelicans to, to get this win against the Lakers um to, to to keep their 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 playoff hopes alive. I think that this New Orleans team is definitely one that's resilient. Um if you've watched them closely, you know, they've had their their ups and downs throughout the season, but I definitely think it's it's a team that's resilient. I also kind of want to see Zion in a, in, a, in a playoff setting uh as well cuz obviously last year he was he was injured so he didn't get a chance to uh to play, but uh I definitely want I want to see the Pills, you know, get get into the playoffs. I think also more than anything um, you know, you got the NFL draft coming up, uh, as in on Thursday, it'll be a week away. So mm -hmm. I'm interested to see, you know, what that's going to look like. Um, you know, obviously, you know, these new WNBA players getting settled into their teams, excited about that as well. Um, and yeah, like that's, that's, that's my general thoughts. No doubt. We'll finish it out with the big OG, big brother, Mike, what you got for me, man? No, man, uh, just a couple of things, reiterate what they said. I want to see what this basketball playoff situation looks like. Um, I want to see Zion, can he finish without getting injured, injured mm. or being mm. available? The other thing is on the swag front, the baseball season is getting to where it's getting. Remember when we moved Bethune and FAMU into the swag? We were talking yeah. about baseball how it would look. It's mm -hmm. getting now to the point that this is the picture we would thought. FAMU, Bethune, Jackson at the top of the East, Texas Southern at the top of the uh, West. This is what we thought it would look like. Wonder how that's going to finish out. And then all of this prognosticating about the draft and this quarterback from Michigan and who's going to do what. You know, we have all of these analysis. I want to see as we move forward, you know, which one's going to stand, the, who, where are we going to separate the wheat from the chafe, so to speak? So uh, so that's kind of what I'm looking forward for. No doubt, man. Good stuff. Uh, we still got some more spring games left out there. Karen Griffin says Tuskegee spring game coming up this Saturday. Uh, for me, I am a huge baseball fan. We got some great baseball action even here in Houston this weekend of the Southern Jaguars. They come to town, take on the Texas Southern Tigers out of McGregor Park. We also got UAPB number one hitting team in the swag. They will be out there at Prairie View. Keep an eye on the Alabama A&M, Florida A&M series. It's Alabama A&M. They travel to Tallahassee. And then Alabama State. They got up off the mat last week, taking two of three from Bethune-Cookman. They traveled to Jackson, Mississippi for a three-game set uh, this upcoming weekend. So a lot of great sports. Get out there and enjoy it all. Uh, you know, my papa always said, live, love, and laugh. And that is how we will end today's show. But you know how we always end these things. Uh, Mike, kick us off, man. Course? Course. Lecture. Go for it, Wilson. Course. Dismissed. You <laughs> oh, come on, man. You, 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 you.